Hi everyone, I'm Justin Meyer with the Kansas City Aviation Department. Welcome to the Weekly Report. Here are three things you need to know this week. Here at Build KCI, the new single terminal project at Kansas City International Airport, the project continues on budget and on time for a March 2023 opening. Airfield paving has just begun, which will continue for the next year and a half. You may have heard about some of the 1% for art projects that have been selected to be included in the new terminal at KCI. Now, as part of the KC GO bonds that were approved by voters, Starlight Theater has been undergoing a number of ADA improvement projects, and now a new 1% for art project will be installed there. The historic Hall of Famer Satchel Page's house is being redeveloped in partnership with Pitch Perfect KC and the Kansas City Royals. This Pitch Perfect plan is working with the Santa Fe Hills neighborhood and members of the Page family to make this a community asset for many years to come. Thanks for watching the Weekly Report. I'm Justin Meyer with the Kansas City Aviation Department. Now stay tuned for videos about these three things and more information from KC Parks about swim lessons. I'm James Martin. I'm the Public Art Administrator for the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The 1% for Art program consists of uh, two different programs. A legacy program was established in the 1980s and um, it says that anytime there's a public building that's built, 1% of the costs are set aside for the adornment of that building. And so an example of that is the new KCI single terminal and parking garage, which will open in March of 2023. And so the art that's being funded as part of that project is part of our Legacy 1% for Art program. The other program comes from the GOKC initiative that was passed by voters in 2017. That initiative has funded projects like one here at Starlight Theater, uh, which will be installed in the fall, the autumn of 2022. We're now in the stage of actually making the artist selection. There's a selection panel that's made up of people from Starlight, people from the community, and people from the Municipal Art Commission. Normally we would try to uh, time the installation of the art with the construction as it's being done. However, given that I've only been with the city less than two years, uh, this one's coming along a little bit after the construction project. So the autumn of 2022 is gonna be extremely busy for us. We've got this installation here at Starlight, hopefully an installation at the Grand Avenue Pedestrian and Bike Bridge, and the installations at KCI are meant to be finished by December of 2022. Our story isn't just about the history and the past of Kansas City. 
It's about how we inspire young people for the future. How we tell the story not just of Satchel Paige, but of a black Kansas City, of a Kansas City, where people could dream of doing so many wonderful and amazing things. And today in Santa Fe, we're telling our young people, our not so young people and everybody in between, that you have an opportunity to see greatness. And we see that greatness through the history here. The preservation doesn't come by happenstance. It just doesn't happen automatically, but it takes the voice of the neighborhood. One of the things that's important for us is to make sure that we're preserving and building upon that historic fabric that we have here. Not knocking things down and putting something new up, but making sure that we're celebrating and promoting the things that happened here and the rich assets that we have, such as this one behind me. Kansas Cityans cared about Satchel Page's story. Kansas Cityans care about this house. And Kansas Cityans care about all of our history. That's truly what equity is all about. The Heart to Help Drive has been, in my opinion, and in the community's opinion, fully successful. It was a vision and a dream. And to see it, to be able to come to pass with the help from everybody, from citywide, has just been a tremendous blessing. And I'm so glad that an event like this could be placed in the community to help the community. It takes a team to do something like this. No one person can do this by themselves. And I am so proud to say that the city of Kansas City employees are champions. They have showed up and showed out at every available turn for this event. I am so proud of my city employees. They are awesome. And it shows that they care as well and that they know and understand that there is a need in the community and we can be there to meet that need. Kansas City has the greatest employees in the city and for them to show up on a Saturday morning to support uh, those constituents and those residents of Kansas City that are in need and just need a little bit of extra to, to get them through uh, the week and to get them as they go back to school is just phenomenal. And, and I'm here not only to support our residents, but to support our employees. Next step for KC Kindness. Well, we're going to be taking it to the street. So you can look forward to our city employees, our volunteers coming out into the community, helping different community organizations by volunteering with them to help make their efforts in the community just a little bit greater. You know, I just again want to say thank you to our employees because they are behind this event. This is a completely employee run event and, and we this could not have happened without our employees. And again, they are the greatest employees in, in this city. Grassroots efforts will never go out of style and it will never be in vain. Veda Limscomb Foundation is very happy to support these swimming lessons at Gorman Pool. It's so important that children learn uh, how to swim and water safety um, and it's a passion of the, the Limscomb Foundation as they uh, serve children in the Northland. The mission of the Limscomb Foundation is to support children in need in the Northland in Clay and Platte counties and so um, offering swimming lessons at no cost to families um, was a great opportunity to do that. It's a huge opportunity for the community. A lot of kids don't get that ability to be able to be taught swim lessons because of um, whether it's finances or just other situations. So being able to have that experience and the ability to learn how to swim, which is such an important life skill and life lesson is just really important. The children are learning a life skill that they're going to continue with, you know, for, here, from here on out. And if you look at the big picture, you know, they're going to need this when they're around water to teach their children. So it's the passing down of, of a skill. I had a boy in my last session who would get in the water and not even want to put his face in the water. I'm um, just very timid, very shy. Um, by the end of the two weeks, he was swimming freestyle and backstroke independently. And then we started working on, a, on breaststroke starting this week. So. I wanted to take advantage of this. This was an opportunity for our family. And with having three grandkids, it was a blessing because, I, you know, it was something I could do with all three at one time. 
so thankful for this opportunity to be able to teach these lessons and to be able to have this experience and I just love getting to meet the kids and the families and building those relationships. On behalf of the Lincecum Foundation, you know, thank you so much for having us out today to uh, see the lessons and to see the pool and the foundation is very happy to support this opportunity.